Hello and welcome to another episode of the Digital Health and Wearables series. I have another magnificent guest for you today, but before I go ahead, please subscribe if you have not uh, done so, and also look at our sponsors, global partners, Spirit Digital, check their solution. But before, um, I mean, before I go ahead and without further ado, I'm extremely excited today to have a public health leader. I'm going to introduce you straight away to Stefan Butajic, which is a public uh, health specialist at Minister of Health in uh, Malta and is also the co-founder of the Digital Health Malta. Stefan, how are you? I'm fine, thanks. Uh, you know, the, the, these times I'm, 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 I'm getting at some point where I, you know, get like really maximized, like I really pushed myself, especially in the past 15 months. But it's also satisfying because you start seeing some incredible changes that have happened and uh, i'm you know it's like that kind of satisfying tired you know right now like that uh, you have to keep on going and going and going but at the same time it's it's really great you know because we're doing so many things great uh, i'm extremely happy to have you on the show i'm gonna go straight to the questions but you are a friend we know each other for a long time and also i've been yeah. 12 a very good combination of like tech brands, public health leaders, innovators, a, a mix in here on a digital health and wearable series. But I'm extremely happy that you are a public health leader from Malta. And now we go to the questions. And the first question that I have for you is, what are you observing in digital health transformation in a public health sector? You know, the, I mean, imagine a bit more than a year ago we didn't used to imagine having contact tracing apps we didn't imagine having digital passenger locator forms we didn't used to imagine having an eu digital covid certificate which you just scan and it is verified on the go there were things that we really didn't used to imagine sometimes for example in the past to to create systems where all the European countries were working together and it worked seamlessly. It was something like very difficult to achieve. But then within 15 months, within 15 months, so this, this is when you think about it, it's like, wow, um, there have actually been uh, two systems where European countries actually work together. One on the contact tracing apps and just recently the COVID certificate system. So something must be happening. You know, there is a change. And the thing that I've really noticed is stakeholder alignment. So once you get all of these different people working in or even different ministries, different sections, different departments, once you bring them all together, all aligned with the same mission to stop the spread of COVID-19 in this case, or to stop a spread of a certain disease, any other disease, once they're all aligned, then you can move mountains. And I've seen this. And and you and what's even nicer sometimes is that there are many like small victories that you get. So for example, if before the, the reporting system used to be based on a PDF system, sending a PDF via email, now we're moving from that kind of approach to a more operational transformative approach where there's a whole system being used. There is a form filled up with all the necessary documents and that goes through a business workflow. So these kind of changes, these are the kind of digital transformations that we need to start seeing in healthcare and public health. That is not just that we move away from the mentality of email and sorting an email one at a time to more like issue tracking, operational workflows which are streamlined, having call centers, you know, the call centers that have, you know, in Malta, for example, we have throughout COVID, for example, we set up 111 and 145. Those helplines have helped us scale significantly, you know, like big time. If you, for example, right now, like one of our systems, since 14, since November, 
uh, we were able to get more than half a million uh, interviews in the system. So more than half a million, definitely more than half a million calls, calls in fact much, much more. But uh, we have been able to really, you know, take the resources that have possibly been, you know, not available so quickly for public health. But now all those digital technologies and resources have been given, have been provided to public health authorities and the transformation which is happening is truly impeccable. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, Stefan, thank you so much. I mean, our world has been turned upside down with the COVID in the last 15 yeah. months. A very uh, nice overview of the digital transformation going on. So thank you for that. And the second question that I have for you is, how do you envision as the way forward for public health? I think like moving forward, we really should be focusing a lot on standards and interoperability. That means that we need to start continue agreeing together, even as European countries, even globally through the WHO. We really need to be looking at uh, aligning, finding ways so that the data information, you know, travels as seamlessly as possible. And in order to do that, you really need to sit down and say, all right, we agree on this, this and this. And there needs to also, even WHO did this, they set up a global digital health strategy, which got accelerated even further during the pandemic. And by the way, I wanted to say one thing, one good thing about this pandemic is actually these videos because they started off in the pandemic. So good job to you, uh, Joao, about that. I, I, that is one silver lining, definitely, of the pandemic to have to listen to this. But moving back to the topic, uh, uh, but apart from standards and probability, we need to look at human resources. We need to build the workforce, especially in public health, for data science. There needs to be public health data sciences available in big amounts because the data is growing, growing, growing. And these data scientists would be well trained to communicate with other public health professionals. So they don't need to be doctors or they don't need to be, you know, health professionals specifically. But if they have a health background, even better. So we really need to invest in the workforce to bring forward and be able to analyze this data and make sense out of this data. So we're looking not at just data scientists, but data engineers, data analysts, and then on top of that, having machine learning scientists, building the full team to, to go across the different, the different points in the data pipeline to ensure that the information goes as fast as possible in the most accurate way possible and in the most comprehensive, you know, so not just, um, accurate data, but also comprehensive and real time. And in ways that can inform countries to take the right decisions at the right time. So I think that will be really our biggest challenge to, to learn from this pandemic and, you know, say, hey, we need to strengthen our workforce. We need to strengthen our data infrastructure so that we can move forward so that we will be able to tackle the, the similar um, changes like COVID-19 even faster than ever before. Uh, brilliant. Stefan, thank you so much for that. You mentioned very important things there, the interoperability, of course, the resources to be more effective with digital, but also the human side. Uh, you mentioned data using, because we're getting more and more data, using data and streamline the systems, but also you mentioned uh, before um, stakeholder alignment, really, really important, all these things to come together. And there are big items and big agendas to work to work on. So thank you so much. And the third and last question is, what do you think will happen uh, after the pandemic COVID-19 and why? Yeah, I'm, I'm not a prophet, but... <laughs> uh, I think that the infrastructure that has been developed, especially the digital infrastructure, is there to stay. And people have learned and are getting used to these new workflows. And imagine like, let me take just a simple example of my everyday life. Before, when I used to live, um, you know, when I used to buy and be at the different shops, it used to be the exception to find a place or it would be more difficult to find a place which actually, for example, a kiosk or a street vendor 
who accepts card payments. Now, because of what happened, the exception is that there isn't someone who accepts cards. So we are having these changes. And these changes, which happen in other sectors, not necessarily healthcare, will then reflect and evolve into healthcare. Telemedicine, you know, telemedicine is there to stay. And because of the human and digital infrastructure which have been built throughout COVID, those will stay. Because it wouldn't make any sense at all to go back. So there will be things that we might scale down. And for good reason, you know, possibly, uh, for example, uh, the, the helplines that we have evolved, for example, they would not be related to COVID or their section, their, their aspect about COVID will be, will be downscaled. That's, that's what we hope. But then the helpline can be used for other infectious diseases, for example, or it can be used also for non-communicable diseases, mm -hmm. for mental health. So you have all these digital infrastructure and human and all these resources which have been developed in a certain way, which were specifically catered for COVID. And all of a sudden, they can be reused and transformed for different aspects of healthcare that still need our attention. Because we remember that we don't have only COVID, now we'll have burdens, which will be related to chronic disease, to mental health, which will happen after all of this is over. So that will be the biggest advantage of all the digital infrastructure that have been developed, that it will be transformed and repurposed for all the other burdens that society, you know, especially the health burdens, are still struggling with. So that is that, that is something that I definitely think is going to happen. That I'm, and I'm looking forward to that time because we've built great infrastructure and now let's make use of it. Mm. Oh, fantastic. Stefan, you mentioned, uh, I mean, the digital transformation in other areas beyond um, beyond healthcare. You mentioned the other non-communicable disease and the other things that can be adapted. And the, you, you're very right, the digital infrastructure is very important. And now we were forced to build that. But before I round up, um, I, I finish all my episodes in a very peculiar way, which is not really a question as such. But before that, actually, let me congratulate you on your work. I know you have been extremely busy. Congratulate you on the last 10 years in digital health, let's say. But also, I know the last 15 months you have been very, very busy combating the pandemic. Let me congratulate you on that. And also, Malta has one of the lowest rates of infection. You guys done extremely well with the preventative side, but also... Uh, put the action in place. So let me congratulate you on that before we go ahead. It's been a team effort, Joao. It's definitely not been just me. It's been a huge team. Mm. And uh, just to give you a very quick example, for example, yesterday we were uh, launching the digital passenger locator forms and there were like five or six different people working at the same time in different places. And we were able to do, like we were able to do great things only as a team. Mm. So that I really want to accentuate. Yeah, brilliant. Look, uh, Stefan, we're coming to the end of the episode. There is yeah. the, the last little thing before I round up and thank all our viewers and everything. I finish mm. all my episodes. It's not a question as such. It's a one minute of fame. Okay. You can mention anything, your personal life. You can mention you're a, you got a great kid. You can mention a personal achievement. You can mention your colleagues. You can mention... Family, you can mention professional work and you achieve so much. You can mention anything whatsoever. So over to you, one minute of time. Well, I'm definitely grateful for my family, uh, Angelica and Jan. Angelica, my wife, and Jan, my son, Trier son. Extremely grateful for them, for having them in my life. But also I want to tell you about Digital Health Mota. Digital Health Mota is a non-governmental organization which is based in Mota, which is raising awareness about digital health and how the, the how we can transform healthcare through technology. So check us out on digitalheadmalta.com. So that would be my big shout out as well to my colleagues, Dylan and Ryan, for being a part of this continuous project. Fantastic. Stefan, let me thank you for that, for your time, for your expertise, for your magnificent insights. And guys, I'm going to put Stefan's LinkedIn and Twitter and Digital Health Malta links there. Make sure 
you check them out and connect with um, Stefan and Stefan thank you so much for your uh, for your time nice to see you I hope to see you again very very soon uh, in person I think it will be sooner rather than later thank you Joao thank you and I'm gonna round up now thank you to all our viewers and listeners make sure you subscribe and check Spirit Digital our global partner and share this magnificent content with your uh, communities in healthcare. And I'll see you next week.